These games right here in this video are my 13 lowest rated board games. So I, mean, I clearly don't think they're that good. That's why they make the list today. But before I tell you what they are, there's something really, really important I need to share with you. So important, this could be the difference of you still liking me by the end of the video, or you're not really liking me much anymore at the end of the video. And that's this, I'm not the type of person that plays a game one time and then just goes online and immediately rates it. Or I don't like skim a rule book or read a review online and say, well, that's stupid. And then give a game a bad rating. Like the games that I rate, I assign a number to, I have played several times, almost all of them. I want to play them many, many, many times to really make sure I feel like I know the game before I rate them. So I'm not claiming these are the 13 worst games of all time. These are just the 13 games that I've given a lot of chances to, and I still don't like them that much. So I am saying I don't like them, but just don't just don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying these are the worst games I've ever touched. Like there are some really bad games I've opened up. They're bad games or I'm not that interested in them. And I just close them up. I never play them, but I'm not going to go online and then rate a game that I never really gave a shot to. All right, hopefully that makes a lot of sense. And I just deflected a little hate because for the most part, we're just going to be laughing and picking on some terrible games together. So let's jump in. First up here, we have the game of Survive. And the reason Survive is such a terrible game is because I have no clue no clue who the audience is for this game. So in Survive, you're all gonna be on an island and the island is sinking. You're trying to kind of get your people off the island onto boats and sailed away to safety. But while you're doing that, you and other players are gonna be trying to eat the other people with like sharks and topple their boats and get them to like sink in the water and all this terrible stuff. And it's super chaotic and super random. And it seems like a kid's game kind of because it's so light and so silly. Like you're not really, you don't have a lot of control of the outcome. There's there's some strategy, but it's basically just random chaoticness. It feels like a kid's game, but then like when you try to play with kids, you're like, yeah, I I ate Johnny. He died. Like I, I took this shark and I chose to move him over there and eat your people. They're dead now. I didn't think it really had enough to really grab my interest as an adult to play over and over again. I was like, it's okay, but it's kind of the kind of game that you want to play maybe with kids and just kind of have a bunch of crazy, fun, chaotic fun. But then it's so mean. The only thing you can do is be like, yeah, I'm trying to kill your people. I'm trying to kill them all off. So I win the game because your people all died in the ocean. So survive, really weird game. I don't really know who this game speaks to, but if you're out there, I'm happy that you like the game. It's not for me. Up next year, I'm gonna pick on another little stupid kids game. So hopefully get you all on my side before I start picking on some real serious, like somewhat popular games. But up next year, we have the game of Chicka Pig. Chicka Pig sounds like an awesome kids game. Like you're gonna be maneuvering your Chicka Pigs, like chicken pigs around the board, trying to get them out your side to safety. And there are chickens and there are hay bales and there's a big pooping cow and they all move in different ways. It seems kind of like interesting, right? Interesting fun, because some things move until they hit an object to stop with so you're trying to maneuver the hay bales around so your chickens can run to them and like basically have paths to get out kind of like chinese checkers it feels a little bit like chinese checkers there's a pooping cow and you slide through the poop you can do that if you want to but but you get negatives it all seems really fun but it's so close to like it's not a pure strategy game but it's so strategic like it's complicated to actually be good at this game it's not a game that's like made for kids. You could sit down with like a wise old man and sit there at a park and like stroke your beard and plan out like the next 15 moves and like one little hay bale placement makes such a big impact because you could block your opponent or it could open up a route for you to get your chicken pigs out. It's like such a complicated strategy and it feels like you're playing you're playing chess with like chickens and pooping cows but but not a lot of adults who want to play games like chess are going to want to play a pooping cow chicken pig game. And for kids, it's like you kind of get into it and it's hard to mask the strategy. You can just be like, oh, we're just kind of having fun being goofy. But yeah, you didn't plan a route for your chicken pigs to get out. So it's really hard for you to win now. You're just going, even if you just give them so many extra turns, it takes them a long time to maneuver their pieces out because it ends up being really complicated. So chicken pig looks like a fun game for kids, but kind of like survive. I just don't know who the audience is for this game. Okay, two games in and I'm worried that I haven't made anybody mad at me yet. So we're going to go right after one of the most popular games on the list and that is Splendor. Splendor is not a great game. I, I don't get 
what the Splendor Appeal is. This one makes the list mostly because it's a game that it seems like people like, and I just don't think it's a great game. I, I, I mentioned it in my best games you can get at Target right now because it's there. I mentioned this is a game that maybe you would like if you would possibly could be interested in this kind of game, but it's just one that I don't get. Like, I don't really enjoy playing Splendor that much. I would much rather just play a simple card game. If you just want something light and fun and fast, and that's why the reason you play is something fast and simple, I would rather just like play Rummy or play just a classic card game or just like Greedy, a fun like quick dice game or something. But it's like want to take a light game and make it just a little more complicated, but still a pretty light random game. Like, I don't know. Splendor, not the game for me. Okay, so Splendor has a ton of mass appeal, but the next game up here has a smaller audience, but if you like it, you probably love it. And that game is Eldritch Horror. But unlike Splendor, I can appreciate why people like Eldritch. It's a game that I think just doesn't do lots of my core preferences in games like co-op or co competitive. I, I, co-op is fine. I prefer competitive. Kind of like more interesting mechanisms or do I want like more narrative stuff? Like I prefer the mechanisms. It's more narrative. It just kind of goes against a lot of things I really want out of the game. Actually, the number one thing I don't like about Eldritch is I feel like there's a lot of overhead with the rules without giving me a ton of things I can do. They're just like all the different things that kind of happen to me, which I think some people like. They kind of like being drawn to that narrative world and they're just like, oh, I'm going to just try to learn this spell and you roll dice. Oh, apparently I got lost in time and space. That's so interesting. Like, it's not my thing. It's fine, but you know what? It, it's okay if you like it. I do videos on this channel often with Joel and Cassie, and they, and they both like it, so you can be wrong with them. More more than one people can be wrong about this game. But I mean, again, I, I think it, this is probably the best game on the list. I think it's actually a good, a great game, but it's just not a game that vibes with me at all. Up next here, we're gonna talk about a little older game, a pure strategy game called Hive. And Hive is a game that I don't really get, but unlike Splendor, like Splendor, I don't get why everyone likes Splendor so much. Hive is a game that I don't get why I don't like. Like it's a pure strategy game where you're placing these bugs out there and the bugs have different movement patterns depending on what kind of bug they are. And you're trying to surround your opponent's queen bee. And one really interesting it does is like the bugs have to stay in a continuous kind of hive, a continuous chain all touching each other. So sometimes your movement's restricted or you can restrict your opponent's movement by certain bug placements that force them to, well, they can't move this piece because that breaks up the hive. It does some interesting stuff I just don't enjoy actually playing it. I think reading the rules, I'm like, oh, that's cool. And like the idea of it's cool. And I'm okay with pure strategy games. I don't play a ton of pure strategy games. I mean, I like chess. I think Santorini is fun. Um, I have some that I like, so I feel like it should be a game that I at least enjoy. And I just, every time I play Hive, I just kind of go back to maybe I like it. Like I feel like it's a game I should enjoy. And it just doesn't click with me. Again, I'm not blaming the game. This is more just on me. I just feel like it's a clever little game that I should like, but I don't. Okay, we have one more game kind of in this moderate dislike territory before we move on to some games that are really at the bottom of the barrel that I really don't like. So this next game up here is Pendulum. And Pendulum is a game that I think I should like. It has worker placement elements. It has some like traction moving up, trying to score points on your player board and it has a real time element, which I know some people hate on this game just because they don't like real time. And I, I'm not a fan of that. Like, I, I don't think you should just see a game as real time and then immediately go give it a bad ranking. Like if you don't wanna play a game that's real time, just don't play a game that's real time. I'm okay with real time games. The thing I don't like about Pendulum is I felt like the, the exchange of resources, like I just feel like, okay, I'm gonna get some blue stuff and trade it out. Was it blue? There's yellow, red. I don't remember what the colors are right now. Yeah, yellow, red, blue, maybe. I, I wanna get some of the red stuff and I'm gonna turn it out for this, this war points here, okay? So I'm gonna get some of this resource here and then trade that out for these points here. It just felt very laid bare, the mechanisms. Maybe it had to be because of the real time there was already a lot going on, but I guess I want a little more like veiledness to the mechanisms. It was just very much like, yeah, that spot, spot there it gives me the blue stuff. And I had the blue stuff to get the blue stuff there that I get victory points for. So Pendulum, not my favorite game. It also then just has all the, the, the common problems with real time games. If you're not a fan of them, then these things like go oh, hoop their time are there first. There's a few ways to resolve that in the rules, but it's still going to be an issue with some people who just don't like real time games. So I don't have a lot of people I can play this game with. And then I personally, I'm just, 
I, I, I don't love it. We are now going to move out of the moderate dislike territory and get into some games that, like I said, I have played many times. These games are on this list because I've played these games many, many times and I really don't like them. So if you watched my channel once before, you might have had a good sense of this one's going to make the list at some point. But up next is, of course, Dungeons and Dragons, The Legend of Dreads. This game takes away all the story elements that some people like out of D&D and just makes it... Let's move our guys around this little dungeon. Bad guys will pop up. You're going to roll dice and you hope you get the numbers to kill them before they kill you. So if you watched my channel much before, you already know that I'm not a big fan of just dungeon crawls, especially pure dungeon crawls, just straight up. I'm trying to roll these dice. Oh, I didn't roll the bow and arrow. I missed. Okay. Now it's a bad guy's turn. Back to my turn. I'm going to try to do this again. Like, not a fan of these games. Anyway, Legends of Dritz is the one that stands in for this list. It is the one that I have tried the most. But really, you could probably replace about any straight dungeon crawl. Now, if there's some sort of story element going on, if there are other things in the game and there are attacking bad guys, that's, that's way different. But for me, just to sit down and just hope you roll the good dice rolls before you die, it's just, that's not my kind of game. So put most straight dungeon crawls kind of as a stand-in for this category, but we're gonna pick on this one right here right now, Legend of Dreads. Okay, so I'm afraid that I alienated a few of you right there, so I'm gonna kind of throw a life preserver out, and hopefully the next game on the list we can just all agree on it's a terrible game, and that's Risk. Risk is, is not a good game. I don't understand why it's still a game that's sold in stores today. Like I have a few good childhood memories of the game, even though I don't remember it being a good game. I have some like good memories of, oh yeah, we played Risk. That's a game we owned. It was at our house and we played. So I went back and played again recently and just like confirmed like, man, this is not a great game. You're just like, I'm going to take these troops and take over this and roll dice and hopefully it works. And it's sort of like, um, it's sort of like Survive in Hive. It's a difficult game to find the right, well, and Chicka Pig. It's a difficult game to find the right audience for, because I would say if you're an adult, there are just better games out there, like much better games out there if you want to do war, or if you want to do intrigue and deception, if that's why you like Risk, there are just better games out there. If you're playing it with kids though, because you just think it's a good kids game, like, it's kind of a tough game because the person with the better global strategy is probably going to win. So you're, you're playing with kids, but you're trying to just not beat up on them all the time. So I don't know. Risk just isn't that interesting. And even if it was interesting, I don't really enjoy it. And even if it was interesting and I enjoyed it, I don't really know who to play Risk with. If it's an adult, I'd rather play a better game. If it's a kid, I'd also rather play a better game. Okay, up next is actually a dexterity stacking game called Mega City Oceania. And I was oddly excited about this game when I got it. I got it for a really cheap price and I was like, I kind of been, I kind of saw it at the store like for months and months and months, maybe even like over the course of the year, I was kind of saying like, oh, that looks really, really fun. Like a stacking game, but there's like cards to kind of tell you how you're supposed to do the stacking. And, and I finally, I think one day it was on a really good sale. So I got it and I was super excited. And I just kind of read the rules and I was like, oh, this doesn't seem fun at all. Like, okay, make a little like bridge shape out of this. So you're like, cool. And I'll try to keep stacking it higher. You get points for the highest buildings. So you're like, okay. And then of course someone bumps the table and it knocks it down, which always happens in stacking games. And there's like how you acquire pieces. Okay, probably the worst part about the game is how you acquire pieces is you randomly pull your hand to a bag and pull them out. And it's like, well, you can't really tell which ones are which, but you can, like, you're trying not to cheat, but also you really need some flat pieces to like make a new support structure. Reach your hand in that bag and you can feel the flat pieces. And like those types of things, you're like, how do we fix this? We're just like, I'm not going to tell you have someone else draw for you, but they could intentionally give you things that you don't need. And, but then the actual things you do in the game, the mechanisms are, are not that interesting. And then the stacking doesn't really work because the things are small, they fall down so easy with the bumps. So literally everything about this game is bad. I was very excited about, but like I said, like I said, I do not have any games. There's other games on this list. That, sorry, there are other games that did not make this list today that I don't like, that I've only played one time. I read the rules. I thought, well, that's not really something for me. So I just put the game away. But this is actually one that I tried because I like spent money on this game. I was like, you know, I think I just need to kind of get into the fun, chaotic nature of a stacking game where things fall over. And I'm like, 
I guess I'll get that card to get a new mission. Okay, I reach my hand to the back and get a few pieces. Okay, I'm going to build something now. It's it's not a fun game. Next up here, we are going really classic to a game that I really, really don't like. Scrabble. I don't like anything about the game Scrabble. Like, first of all, if you're trying to play to win, it takes a long time. And I'm okay with long games. I'm okay with games that take multiple hours. If we have really cool, interesting things we're doing, like back and forth, like war games type of things. But, but Scrabble can take hours because people really want to win. And the way they win is by going and staring at their words for a really long time. And the further you get into the game, the more it slows down. Every round of Scrabble starts out with, oh, it'll be fun. I'll put a few fun words out there. Then someone starts looking at the score and realizing, if I can use all these letters, I can get that Z out there on that triple word score, I'm going to win. And the game just drags to a halt. So you kind of have to have a timer on people. And nobody wants to play a game like that with a timer. And then you have the dictionary issue. Do you have to have the word in your brain? Yes, that's the only good way to play this game. But if you're someone who's like, okay with a dictionary then you're going to be seeing you're flipping through the dictionary trying to find words or they're going to put a word out there that's crazy then look it up and be like oh that one doesn't count okay put another word out that's crazy does that one work nope that doesn't count the, the dictionary is bad and then even if all that stuff wasn't bad i'm not good at it i'm not good at looking at a bunch of letters and then unscrambling them and putting them in all its orders or even if it was something that i thought was enjoyable i'm just not good at that kind of game and then on top of that some horrible person invented this even crueler game called Upwards, which I will admit is actually kind of a cool idea. I will admit it, but I'm even worse at that. People who play Upwards are like, oh, this word penguin, I can add these couple letters and now I just turn it into trampoline. And by the way, I scored a billion points and you lost. Like, I'm not good at these games, first of all. And then on top of that, like, again, they slow way down. They take forever to play. People just sit around just like, just thinking silently because you can't talk to each other. If you talk, you distract people like, oh, don't talk, don't talk. I'm trying to focus. You're like, okay. So when you're the, when you're the person who's not their turn, you're like, so how was your day? They're like, shh, I'm thinking. So terrible games. I don't want to just sit around silently with someone and play a game that ends up taking a really long time, that's not fun, doing something I'm not good at doing, and arguing about which words are in the dictionary. Scrabble, terrible, terrible game. Stop, stop selling it, just take it off the shelves. Up next here, we had the game of Monopoly. And if you weren't aware, Monopoly is not a good game. And I have two reasons for you. First of all, the game itself is not great. Now I do give Monopoly a lot of credit because you think about it was made in like the 1930s or what games were around back then it probably did do a lot to kind of the board game hobby to to open up the world of all the different mechanisms that can go on we don't think about monopoly in these terms anymore but it did do a lot of cool things with board gaming for how old it is but modern day i don't know i mean i, I would say it's not relevant but it's still sold a lot of people still seem to like monopoly but monopoly itself is not a great game but the second reason it's not a great game is because you have to play with other humans and not everyone's on the same page when you play Monopoly. Like there'll be someone there who wants to play Monopoly and just kind of have fun, roll the dice. It's basically random anyway what happens whether you win or lose. They just want to roll the dice and have a good time and go around, collect properties, and that's the game. Someone else views this as their practice negotiation because they love being a salesperson and just twisting people's arms. And they, and they play for like the intense, I want to coerce everyone to these great deals for me and I want to win. And you play this game and I'm kind of just like in the middle, like, hey, we can play to win, but like, why is everyone getting mad at each other? And it just, no one ever gets along in Monopoly. It needs to be 30 or 45 minutes and it takes like a long time. No one ever leaves in a good mood. Monopoly is not a good game because you are forced to play with other people who are not on the same page about what they want to get out of this game. But hey, you want to know a game that's based on a classic board game that's even worse than Monopoly? This right here, Pirates of the Caribbean Life. It's like Pirates of the Caribbean, which is a cool theme, but but it's life. And life is a completely random, stupid game that I don't understand why people like. So if you buy this game, we played as kids and we were like, oh, this is kind of cool. We're like the pirates and like, I'm Jack Sparrow. And everything about this game 
is 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 just dumb and random. Like it kind of like oh you have a theme and you have a boat, but like depending on literally if you never play this game, depending on what pirate you were dealt at the beginning, you might just make more income. So there's income spaces you hit, and you're going to get 800. This person gets 900. This person gets 600. You think that's an advantage? Yeah, it's a huge advantage, and it's there's no compensation. It's just oh yeah, that's just kind of the way it is. Jack Sparrow is better than the parrot guy, you know, whatever his name is. Sorry, I forgot his name. But you know what I mean? It's just a stupid, stupid game. Then you hit the, the boat buying square. And when you hit the boat buying spot, like, you should buy a boat. And if you have a better boat, you're going to battle each other and roll dice for the rest of the game. And who has the high roll combined with their boat modifier is going to win. But, but the boat you buy depends on how much money you've randomly acquired up to that point. Like, there's... So you play this game and, and literally nothing matters except you get a spin a spinner. I guess maybe, I mean, it's not even like, I, you might notice that I haven't mentioned Trouble because Trouble doesn't make this list because the game of Trouble, at least is kind of fun to get pop the thing. It's super random, but it works for like three and four year olds. Cause all you do is you pop the thing and you move around, you have a good time. You go, oh, I got gotcha. you. You know, it's a good move. Ah, it's just fun. It's like, oh, light fun. But life is like, there's more going on in this game. But really, it's just like trouble. You're just moving around randomly on a board, letting things happen to you. I guess kind of like life. But you want to know it's even worse than Pirates of the Caribbean Life just to really drive home this point. My number one game today is life. Like, if you want to make that other game even worse, take out the only thing, like, exciting theme about it and just make it a completely random game where you roll and move around the map and nothing you do matters. And it takes way too much time for a game that you really, you really should just all sit around and take a dice and roll and whoever has the high roll wins and then you just win that game and then you just go on to a better game because the game of life is terrible. Again, let me emphasize, there are other completely random games like Sorry and Candyland and Trouble, but those games are at least light, fun, and fast and easy to play with kids of all ages. But but life is like, let's like make more of a game that's, that's still really just total randomness with nothing you can do to control your outcome. You're just going to win or lose, basically depending on how that dice rolls. So I hate that game. So once again, just keep in mind, I'm not saying these are the worst games of all time, though life might be the worst game of all time, but these are the worst games for me that I have played many times. Games that I've given a shot to, feel like I've played several times and still don't like them. So I'd love to hear from you. What are some of your games that, maybe not necessarily a game that you just only tried once and didn't like, but what's a game that you tried, maybe you tried many times, and after all those attempts you were like, man, I, I really just don't like this game. I don't think this is a good game. Let me know what those are in the comments down below. I'll see you guys next video.